Hello and welcome. I'm Cynthia Miller and today we're going to paint Raven's Flight and I'm just looking at my brushes here. We're going to use the the two in the middle, uh, the number four round brush and also the zero to two number round brush and um, we're just going to get out our, our palette and I use my little spray bottle to uh, wake up my paints. I let them sit from day to day and I like to just sort of clean things up a little bit before I get started. So we're going to be mixing some yellow ochre, some no-name yellow that I have, as well as burnt umber to get started. We're going to start with the, um, the sunset sort of uh, light behind the raven. In, in the back of the trees and so we want to have that as the sort of the backdrop for the raven. So that is the color that we're mixing up here and uh, getting things ready for. Now we want to start out with a nice light shade of yellow and so the the best way to do this is just to add water to your palette the more water you add to your colors, the less pigment uh, will come. And so we want to start really light. And I'm just pointing out that um, where we're going to do this between the trees. So you want to make sure that your trees are distinct where you have those. You don't want to be uh, making a mistake and putting yellow on your trees. But basically, we're just going to outline the, the light behind the raven. And what I want to do here is outline the trees with a very light, light version of the Payne's Gray. So again, just adding water to this, this lovely gray that I use all the time. Just wanted to be a little bit more specific on where the trees are, where the sky is, so I'm not uh, making any mistakes as I, as I go along. So the trees that are furthest away from us will be the lightest and then as those sort of those middle trees will be a little bit darker and then the ones at the front um, that's where we will put more detail and that will give you the depth in this painting. Now we've continued this light gray to all of the trees. We want each of the trees to have a base color on them and then what we'll do is just keep going back in and making uh, darker shades of the Payne's Gray to give shadow, to give depth, keeping those ones at the back the lightest and bringing the, the color a little bit deeper as we move forward. And you'll see this as we um, go through the painting, as we progress through it. But right now I'm just outlining each of the trees with a very light shade. It doesn't matter how light it is, just each of the trees outlined. Now I'm going to go back into the light behind the raven with some more of the, the yellow. We've got the, the yellow ochre, the no-name yellow, and I've wet the area between those far trees and then I just dabbed in the color and now I'm using my smaller brush to go in there and spread that around. I want it to be very bright and vivid back there. I have sort of an image in my mind of, of what I'm looking for and so we want that, that light to really show as to where the, the raven is coming from. So I'm just working that a little bit, getting that uh, blended in between the trees. So I've just blended that in. I've just given it a little bit more depth to that and, then, and I'm just bringing it down now into the next layer of trees. You can sort of see the there's trees in the back, trees in the middle, and trees at the front. And what I'm doing is bringing that light into the middle area now by bringing it down in between the trees. I am uh, going to mix in, again, this is the, the no-name yellow and the um, yellow ochre and I'm just looking at how the, um, the next set of trees are 
sort of in the middle of the page and I want to bring those colors a little bit more vivid in there. Now we want to create a little bit of a, um, it looks like there's ground in the forest. So we want to keep that in mind. We don't want the trees to look like they're just floating. We want to start, you know, adding some color at the bottom of the trees and making the trees look like they, they belong there, like they are going right into the ground. So just filling in all the spaces between the trees with that yellow combination it gets a little bit darker as we go out from the center. So I'm bringing in a little bit of that No Name Burgundy I was I had mentioned earlier, and you know just keeping the darker areas to the lower part of the trees, in between the trees, and just trying to create um, you know sort of that transition pe between the sky and the horizon into the ground. So we want to keep the the top part of the painting, the sky, um, looking lighter, and then we'll gradually add more burgundy into the, the floor of the forest to make it a little bit darker around the, the trees. So as you can see, I have added uh, that burgundy to the right side of the painting, and now I'm working on the left side. And what I'm my focus is is to make the tones the same on the high part of the, the the sky the middle part of the sky and then the ground so that's what I'm trying to to keep in mind as I create this you don't want the right side to be really dark and the left side to be really light in this particular instance you want to create that same tone that is consistent from left to right So the paper is wet and we're uh, adding a little bit more burgundy as we go, just matching the right side, uh, left side with the right side. Just bringing in some colors. And of course, the what I'm trying to achieve here is a, a really rich autumn looking forest. So these are not necessarily the sky between the trees, but the, the leaves and the, the light and, and the, the color of the forest with the, the autumn leaves. And what I'm doing now is, is creating that forest floor with the, the two different yellows, the yellow ochre and the, and the no-name yellows that I have, adding a little bit of burnt umber to it to, to give it some richness and just, um, you know, creating that, that space in the forest that uh, sort of anchor the trees um, give it a look like there is the, the ground beneath the raven. So just sort of creating that, that line. So just bringing in the No Name Burgundy for the forest floor. And I think this is the pure color. I don't think that there's anything mixed in there. So that gives you an idea of, of what that's like. And I mean, the whole challenge, I think, for this particular design is to create the, the shadows on the floor of the forest, uh, shadows of the, the trees, um, make it look like there is, you know, leaves that are uh, making up the forest floor. Um, having that bird in flight coming out of the light through the forest. And um, we're, we're quite lucky here. We, we have quite a few ravens and eagles and uh, heron that we get to watch. We, we don't necessarily have a, 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 a forest that looks like this, but I just thought it, I like the idea of the birch forest with, um, or this could be alder as well. We have a lot of alder trees, the, the white um, and the sort of gray and black looking trees. But um, I love the idea of the, the fall colors, but really rich is what I'm trying to accomplish here. So there's a lot of play going on. I have to get those colors to look exactly um, how I want them to look. 
and it's um, a little bit of a challenge. So the paper is wet, so it blends very nicely. And if a, a section dries, you can just put water on it or just add more paint with more water. And you'll find that it, um, it blends a whole lot better when your paper is a little bit dampish. Not puddles of water. I think that that's probably the, the biggest challenge for watercolor artists is to have the, the perfect moist uh, paper that you know allows you to do what you want. Obviously there's different levels of, of um, you know wet on your paper that you want to have just depending on what you want to do. But there is, uh, you know, right where I'm doing there, the line between the yellow, the light yellow and the dark yellow. I'm trying to blend that in. But, but again, make it look like there is, there is a, a layer there of the floor. And I think really when I look at this painting, it comes out as I work through it with the, the very, where the tree meets the forest floor. That is where it, it um, you want to have that sort of landing place place for the trees so it doesn't look like the trees are are floating you want to have it naturally look like it's it's it belongs there so I'm just filling in as I mentioned the, the darker burgundy amongst the the trees giving it that rich forest floor look And so I'm going to start doing the left side of the page now because I want to keep up with the left and right. I don't want one to be uh, different colors, different shades. So I want to work back and forth to make the, the left look like the right. And so just uh, going around the branches here. You you could draw in your branches if you want, but I um, I didn't do a whole lot, just one or two there where I have to paint around. But again, just, just bringing that burgundy color into the left side with the same tones. So I'm going to start uh, painting the trees. I was curious to how this was going to look with this burgundy forest. And I've mixed up uh, Payne's Gray. And I'm just going to start putting marks on the trees. I don't want to cover the whole thing with another coat, but what I'm going to do is start making it look like the the birch or the alder forest that I know in my mind with the uh, black marks across the sort of gray white trunks and um, you know this is sort of fun because I love doing trees because they're all so different and as long as you give them a varying uh, sort of shades and marks it it's perfectly fine the way they look. The only thing I would um, sort of caution you for this particular design is to not put too many branches because it will look a little bit uh, busy if you put too many branches and when you do put the branches um, they are a little bit darker on the underside of the branch so as you go through each one and give it sort of a its own personality you can add layers to it uh, just keeping in mind the lower part of the tree is usually the darkest and because the light behind the raven is in the middle of the, the, the painting, the left side of the, the trees on the right will be lighter, and the right side of the trees on the left will be lighter. So just keeping that in mind, those, those uh, few points when you're, when you're doing these trees. Also what I did, I left the branches till the very end. So um, I would start at the, the back, and then work my way forward so the ones at the front look like they're overlapping the ones at the back. So I've got a few trees done on the right here and I'm liking the way it's 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 uh, coming together. I'm going to um, just start on the raven to, to give you an idea of, of how that uh, turns out. Again, just a very light 
um, layer on the raven first and I realized the wing actually goes over the tree uh, so I want the wing to look like it's on this side of the tree so I'm just um, spending a bit of time and and you know working on this tree to get it complete first before I actually start working on the the raven's wings and it really didn't take a whole lot to to make that happen so that tree is really sort of midway so it's not going to have quite as many details on it as the uh, the one at the, the front so um, I can start working on the raven and the top part of the wings are smooth lower part a little bit of a um, feather design to it and there's feathers on either ends of both of the wings that sort of just look like they're they're free flow sticking out there and that's sort of fun to to have it look like that they're uh, like they're just sort of the wind is going through them so we want to keep this light you don't want to have it just pitch black you want to have your paint so um, that you can sort of see the the um, the feathers and the, the at least assuming that they're feathers just with those lines that I'm putting in there now on the lower part so you can make the dark wings on the top and make the feathers um, just a little bit lighter on the lower part and then of course the the tail feathers just showing a little bit below that and outlining the individual feathers and then filling that in with a, a gray color you're going to be able to see those lines if you keep those tones that way so hopefully that helps to paint that that raven now what I did with with the head is leave a circle of white for the face and, and I'll, I'll um, fill that in later but basically I'm just trying to put a little bit more of the dark Payne's gray on the wings to um, accent how that looks So I'm just outlining the top of the head a little bit more, a little darker shade of, of black. And then I'm just dabbing in just a tiny little bit of gray and um, picking up a little bit. You know, sometimes I put color in and I pick it up and it leaves a really nice sort of mottled look. And, and basically the water, or sorry, the paper is still wet. And I'm just putting in dabs of black to make it look like eyes features on the face now you know it's it's not exactly the easiest thing to to paint the face of a bird heading straight for you but you know that there is two eyes there's a beak and basically it is is just basically looks like black dot so that's all you have to do is is make it light enough in the background and then just making those those dots dark enough so that the eye assumes there is a face there with eyes and a beak. So I'm going back to the grays in the trees and just uh, filling in um, the middle trees as well as the trees in the back and then I move towards the left side and get those trees looking like the ones on the right. And as you can see, the ones on the left are a little bit darker, just a little bit closer, but I am uh, working to add some accents. And uh, I love the way this is this is looking now, adding the, the branches as I go here. And as you can see, I can do sort of like little bumps on the trees with, with dark marks and, um, you know, just making sure that that branch is very distinct and, and dark underneath it. It makes it look a little bit more realistic because when you look at a tree that's that's what's happening there's dark underneath the branch and again not too many just enough to make it look like there's uh, you know branches there through the forest so I've decided I want a little bit more color in it I'm going over the yellow in the light in the background just adding a little bit more depth to it. I want this to be really vivid. I don't want it to be 
sort of a light color. I want it to be really rich looking. And so I'm, I'm bringing that out by starting with the, the lighter shades and then I'll be able to gauge how dark to make the rest of the painting by how light that, uh, that yellow is in, in the back. So this looks a little bit radical when I start to do this, but believe me, if you've got the, the color on to start with, this Payne's Gray will help to give it some depth. And so I'm just going to play with a little bit. I, I add some, I subtract some, I, I blot it up a little bit. And what you'll find is it, it does make a, a really nice layer. And you can sort of see that dark line where I start to to bring that forest floor a little bit more distinctly and um, I think I'm just adding a bit of water there to, to blend that in. You know it's nice to have all those lovely colors but really when you look at the forest floor there's a lot of dark there so what I'm trying to do is just bring in some dark, bring in some shadows, make it look realistic. Just adding water to to the color that's already on there, blending it in, giving it a real mottled look, like what you would find the autumn leaves to look like. Beautiful colors, but also dark in between. And what I'm doing, you can see, I'm just sort of anchoring the the trees now with that uh, dark paint a little bit more, adding some more yellow ochre, and just sort of mixing things up until I get the, the look that I want. So just play with it a little bit, bring in some colors, bring in some water. Don't necessarily have to do exactly as I'm doing here, but uh, it's just a matter of playing with it as you go. So I'm just continuously adding these colors to the forest floor, just trying to get some depth, some shadows. I'm loving the way that this is shaping up, so I'm just playing with it. And of course, if you keep playing with it too much, it's going to be too much. So you have to sort of step back every once in a while and, and just gauge that uh, that you're not, you know, sort of going past that, that, that point of, of uh, where you want it to be. So again, just going over those trees in the back, I wanted to bring those out a little bit more. And of course, there's a little bit too much pigment there, so you have to pull it out. But you want those trees at the back to be nice and light. So we're just adding a few more little touches here, darkening up the, the branches making sure that those trees at the front really stand out and that the, the layers of the forest sort of happen naturally for your eyes. So these branches a little bit lighter as we go back, but they're still present. So you want them to show. It's touching up a few little spots here and there bringing out the black of the raven, maybe, you know, putting a few shadows on, on the raven even. But just finishing up here and just taking a nice good look at how things have transpired and, and how they work together. So I'm just going to have a look at the the angle of the light and start to bring in some actual shadows for the trees and, and you can see the, the angle to the right. You imagine the, uh, the light blocking out the, the trees and so just making that very clear with those trees that they've got a shadow from that light. And I think that really helps to make it a little bit more realistic. They always say that your painting comes to, to life when you start adding those shadows in. So 
So that's pretty much it for the Raven's Flight. I hope you've enjoyed that and that you're able to recreate that maybe with your own forest trees or um, colors that, uh, that you love of the autumn. So um, yeah, have a wonderful day.